Goes into Wales, Wales through a goal, slots it beyond Fodringham, and the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire Derby. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Fodringham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box, and Duffy, he can hit them, and he does. Oh! Hello everybody, welcome back. It's New York Talk, the Rotherham United podcast, and this is a normal show, this is not an emergency podcast. Um, we will be talking, we'll go over the Steve Evans stuff again, so Mick can upset some people. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about the Birmingham game as well, um, and anything else we've got time for, because why not, we're here. Um, Mick... How's your, how's your, how's your, I saw you 24 hours ago. How have you been in the last 24 hours? Yeah, all right, mate. All right. No, no problems at all. Wonderful. And Tom's back. How are you doing, Tom? Oh, I was expecting a chair or something then. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, on. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, sorry I couldn't make yesterday, but, you know, I'll try my best to replicate Ben Pringle. I don't know how, <laughs> well, how easy that's going to be, but we'll see. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> a couple of comments already. We'll see who is. Telly Fenby is with us. He says uh, he's ready for the roller coaster for next season. Martin Holland says, Good evening, everybody. Fingers crossed, no manager bounce. Sarah Ogden's with us, as is YouTube user Michael Carnell. Richard John Hinchliffe is also with us, as well as people with us all left, right, and center, um, as well as so Steve Grundy. Um, Phil says, Has Steve Evans invited Mick for Sunday lunch? <laughs> uh, any invite incoming just yet, Mick? I need me. to. Uh... I'd need to starve myself for a few days before I could manage one of uh, one of Steve Evans' Sunday lunches, wouldn't I? I bet his Sunday lunches are absolutely on point, by the way. I bet they are. Yeah. I bet they're absolutely nailed. Yeah, yeah, Um Paramount asks if Mick's calmed down. It's been good, Mick, because people have been rational and calm about it in these conversations. There's been no name calling like clown or anything like that. Oh wait, Mick. Oh wait, no. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> wait. No. Oh. The opposite of that. Slightly um, opposite. Yeah. <laughs> How you feeling, Mick, about it? 24 hours later, I'll go, go come talk to Tom and he's in a minute, but... Oh, God. I <laughs> <laughs> don't know if I want to. Well, let Mick go first and say, how are you feeling? It's 24 hours, easier for the long haul, you know, he's, he's, he's our manager. Um, have you calmed down a bit? A little bit. A little bit. Uh, you've got to be realistic about it, haven't you? Uh, you know, and, and I'd like you to point out, we've all got different opinions um, and nobody's right, nobody's wrong. You know, they're just opinions. Mine is that I don't think it's the right move, but but on the flip side of that, there's absolutely no doubt that in the next few weeks, possibly months, you know, the atmosphere is going to improve. The performances will definitely improve. There's no doubt, no doubt about it. Um, but for the long term, I, I, I still I stand by what I've said for the long term. You know, mm. um, but it's our club, isn't it? You know. And no matter what we all say in the heat of the moment, we'll still be there Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, whatever it is. Um, and we'll get behind the team. So yeah, I've, I've calmed down a little bit. Uh, and I should just I should just carry on. But you know, for me, I stand by what I've said. Yeah. Uh, look, and, and this they've got two comments here that perfectly sum up the feeling of the fan base. Uh, Charlie says, best not be moaning about heavens. He says the best news, he says the best news since Paul Warren left. And Yoza here says, uh, uh, sorry, Yoza here, Paul Chadwick says, I agree with Mick, it's a backward step. And this is the thing, Tom, I don't think, go on, talk, just talk me through your feelings towards yeah. it because, uh, you, know, when, yeah. you, know, if we're in, you know, if we're in in November, we'd have got Gary Rowett in, let's say, for, as an example. Everybody would have been quite chill about it. I don't think there'd be massive excitement, massive anger. It would have been just quite chill, whereas mm. Steve Evans... Nothing is chill about, is there? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, one thing's for sure: it's going to be entertaining next season. Correct. And it absolutely will be. Um, look, it's 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 an interesting appointment. I, I I can see it from all sides. It's um, what Kev was saying yesterday about you need the fans back on side. This was the only appointment that was going to do that. It really was, unless you're looking at getting Warren back in, which even then, under the circumstances he left, might not even have been as jubilant as this. Um, sure. You want the fans back on side. In terms of businessmen and and whatnot, what um, Stuart's done is is 
the right option. He did it early enough so that we get the clause or whatever it was, whatever compensation we had to pay. He's done it, you know, to a point, you know, he's brought in a someone who the fans can get behind. He's brought someone in who is who is Rotherham DNA, as he said. I think the backward step here, and I think a lot of people maybe overlook it, is we took a step forward when we when we um appointed Richardson as we were going to move the culture and we were going to appoint Rob Scott as director of football. Therefore, if anyone left as manager or head coach, if anyone left as head coach, nothing would happen. It would it'd be the same routine. It's just another person in. Mm. Backward step, I think a lot of people are misinterpreting as Evans is the backward step. The backward step is that Evans is now manager and what we've done and all this time of like, look, we're going to change, we're going to go forward, we're going to do this, that and the other is, is completely just gone back on itself. And if when you know it is a matter with when with with evans he's not going to be here forever when he leaves what state are we going to be in are we going to be championship league one even league two is he going to be sacked leave whatever resign you know it's 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 so up in the air now and i think this is the biggest issue i have with the appointment of evans is that he is he is a he's passionate he's a winner he is fantastic short term I think long term, though, if you get rid of him or he walks to go somewhere else or he just walks in general, who do you bring in that matches that energy, um, arrogance? Um, there's no sort of philosophy around it. Don't get me wrong. Richardson had his cons and he was all intents and purposes, probably not the uh, it's it, in hindsight, maybe not the best man for the job. All right. It's it's it's. It's facts are facts, but I think he would have he focused a lot on wanting to get had a five year plan, wanting to get the club where he thinks it deserved to be. Whereas um, Evans is more right next season. Let's go back up and then we'll see what happens. And I think a lot of fans will enjoy it. It'll be chaotic. It'll be fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm there for it. You know, I'm not going to not support them because I think that we haven't got five years in us. You know, I'm going to support it year by year like everyone else. But if you want to be a stable championship club, I think Evans coming in, or I think I think not Evans coming in, I think Stewart doing this proves that he thinks the infrastructure's okay. He thinks that behind the scenes is okay, whereas we all know it's not. And there's no again, it's just facts here. We know it's not. It's non-league league two standard facilities, if not worse. So, you know, it's it's tough. It's really tough to say. We will all get, you know, next season we may we may well come back up. We'll have the str- one of the strongest squads. We'll have, I think Evan, did he He didn't win League One Manager of the season, did he? He was nominated or something. I think he was nominated, but I think. Yeah. Well, either way, you know, a, a good League One manager who knows this, that and the other about League One. But who, who knows what will happen? I'm just not concerned with Evans himself. I'm concerned with where the club's going and having this... Um, Having having the building box box in, in place were great. Richardson might not have been the man for it, but you keep you kind of you want to keep those building blocks. But with Evans coming in and him being manager, it almost seems like that was his decision. And you know, it just it's 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 weird. It's a very odd scenario we find ourselves in because we just it's it's like it's like we were ten years ago. Um, no real movement back in League One with Evans as manager. Start from scratch again because half these players are going. It might it might end well again, but you know our best years. It's tough to say. Our I don't want to say best years because you know we had some good years under Evans, but our best you know last five or six years have been from a place of you know let's try and get this club to where we think it should be in the championship stat established. I, I don't know. It's it's such a tough call to say. Um, but yeah, no, <laughs> that's my two cents anyway. That's what I would have said last night if I was on, waffled on for eight minutes, nine minutes now. So <laughs> I'll, I'll shut up and I'll, I'll leave. I'll leave all the hate comments and try not to get. <laughs> this is I your think... best chance of winning this bet, by the way, Tom. Three, three, two, zero, uh, big Steve. Yeah, to be fair, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever I said out the window. I hope Evans Evans wins three back to back because, <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think Charlie's. Kind of hit the nail on the head with this comment, to be honest with you. But, but what are we realistically expecting for the future? Because no matter who we bring in, will it advance us any further than we are now? Well, Tony Stewart's in charge, and I think I, I alluded to this last night, didn't I? You know, I talked about the fact that 
uh, and I've been called out for this, saying it's a PR exercise on behalf of, 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 of Tony Stewart to try and win the back, fans back. And I get that. I understand why. And I understand what we need around the club. And I understand it needs a it needs a kick up the backside and everything else. As supporters, we're wanting to progress. And, and all the sounds and noises that have come out of the club over the last few years are, we want to progress, we want to consolidate as a championship club. But, but we're not doing it. We're not putting the infrastructure in place. We're not trying to build... From the bottom and and this decision by tony stewart just emphasizes that fact for me he doesn't he hasn't got a plan he hasn't got a plan it's as simple as that in my view a long-term plan you know um and and until until somebody comes in and and helps him either find well both financially and shows him the ropes of how to run a football club because I think he's reached his peak in terms of his ability of running a football club. And don't get me wrong, I am a, I cannot be more, I could not be more grateful for what he has done for this football club. But much like Paul Warren at the bottom of the championship, he's reached his, he's reached the ceiling of his ability, and he will never admit that because he's, he's, he's too proud a man to, to admit that he's got, he's got faults. However, he, he's not going to take us any further. And, and I, I would argue, I would venture to suggest that if he were a multi-billionaire, I still don't think he'd be able to take us any further because I, I don't think he's got that. I don't think he's just, I just don't, don't think he's capable of it. So like, like Charlie said there, we want to build for the future. We want to build a solid base. We had that. We started with that. And then because it it's not gone right, we've had two or three, two, now three, kind of knee-jerk appointments because we couldn't get anybody else. Probably, arguably, on all three occasions, certainly the first two, you know. Matt Taylor weren't first choice. Mm. That's right, sure. Liam Richardson was fourth or fifth choice, you know. Um, Steve Evans would always come back. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. it. It's not. It's not planning for the future, but look. Yeah, look, yeah. Looking at Stevenage comments as well, it seems like he's left them in a worse place than he got was there. League position aside, it sounds like he's put them in debt and you know just kind of left without really de- just a bit of a surprise to them. So I don't know. It, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it worries me. It worries me. We, we are where we are, aren't we? And we're and and we're not gonna we're not gonna get. I mean, John's obviously in the comments. We're not going to get Tom Brady's coming in to Rotherham United or Tom Brady equivalent, you know, mm. uh, because the, the the potential is not there to build a club. Like, for example, with Birmingham, it is, you know, the, the potential is there. With Rotherham United, it's not. So, you know, we've got to look at other options, other ways of, of doing it. And that's, I think, where Tony Stewart fall, is falling down. Yeah. Uh, Shelley says, in terms of backward step, we've taken a major one with the last two managers. He says, potentially mm. a state. We've been in not for a long time. It's as it can't go worse. We're talking about platform and building, Tom. Platform mm. was there when Paul Warren left. Everything was there. The building blocks were already in place. We could say that some of these players were out of contract shortly and this, that, and the other, but there was a culture and a way to play and a way that you trying to move forward. Whether you agree with it or not, it was there. All it needed mm. was somebody to come in and just basically do the same thing. It mm. didn't need ripping up and starting again from the football side. That was the training ground needed doing, and we need to do things with the the the, the, the background stuff. But from, the, from a culture point of view and, and a playing point of view, the building blocks were already there. Mm. And then Matt Taylor's ripped it up. Yeah, he kept us up. He did. But the last summer has put us back Let's put us back back to where we, we are exactly where we are when Paul Warren came in in the first place right now, aren't mm. we? We're exactly the same position. And mm. that's such a shame. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's it's yeah, it's not it's not brilliant, is it? Um look, Matt Taylor's signing was I, th- I don't think anyone had any qualms with him when he no. signed. I don't think it was ever a, a bad decision. In hindsight, yeah, of course it was, but you know, hindsight's a great thing. He, yeah, tried to run before he could, we've said all this, tried to run before he could walk, tried to change everything about the club, the culture, everything about it, and it just didn't work. And Richardson came in, tried to build what was left, 
maybe just he, he, yeah he didn't he didn't do himself any favors sure but you know he said all the right things in regards to wanting to put in a plan for the next five years wanting to put in trainer facilities um he wanted to put in you know a, a culture shift is what he kept saying and yeah performances on the pitch were awful probably didn't hold himself into high st high standards um he, he didn't you know it's, it's an odd one because you know we all knew how bad it was and somehow it got even worse under him never covered himself in glory and i'm you know i'm not a richardson in i, wasn't, I wasn't a richardson out re either really to be completely honest i didn't care it, i'd lost complete you know I'd, lo I'd lost complete complete connection so you know having said that even me who i feel hadn't eaten like couldn't care less about what was going on steve evans you know I, I'm, I'm gonna watch the last three games now just because <laughs> it, it's gonna be entertaining in a roller coaster you know it's it's one of those things where like you say under one we've we've not progressed in three years two and a half three years almost and it's uh, two seasons at least anyway last season and this season it's yeah it's a it's a, it's a shambles and well we'll see top yeah um yeah it's 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 one it's one of those where we'll just, we'll just see you know it's 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 tough to it's it's really tough to decide what is going to happen and see what's going to happen you know evans could be the best thing that happens to us or he could be the worst it could literally go one of two ways um maybe not the worst thing that happens to us but you know what i'm trying to say not that quite hyperbole but you know it's <clears throat> It's it's it'll be an interesting development, definitely, and I, it'll make next season a lot more interesting as well. He knows the league, he knows, he knows what players to get. You know, he's he's done one, he's done wonders with a Stevenage side, yeah. and, it'll, and it'll be attractive proposition to bring in players. A lot of players will want to play under Evans, improve themselves, get that boost up to the championship. You know, will be an attractive outlet now for a lot of for a lot of players. And uh, you know, I don't know, I can't. He signed so many players. You can't really remember his track of track track record of signings, whether they were old, young, or whatever. But we'll see. Um, everything, mate. They were everything. Yeah, they were. It, it was. It felt like he he'd signed ten players because three of them would come off, and that was yeah. the, that was the ratio of good to bad sort of thing. It's just the price you had to pay. No, seriously though, I think I think Rob Scott will make a big difference in terms of the recruitment. I, oh yeah, I, I think him going back to that job is is great, but I still think a director of football is needed. I. Yeah, that's that's where I stand on the situation. Anyway, there, there needs more. There needs to be more support at the top end of the hierarchy because Stuart doing it by himself, it's not. Um, what's the word? It's not sustainable at all. No. Um, well, John, John Morrell says here, Tony Stewart reminds me of a type of football club owner uh, who were everywhere 10, 15 years ago. Football has evolved since that. Uh, it goes back to original question of ambition. Football's moved forward, and if you don't move, if you, if, as we say in football, football's one of those things that stand still. You're going backwards, aren't you? Um, and that's what we did this season. We stood still, and we've gone way, way backwards. Um, yeah. Um, Harry says, "Seriously, Liam Richardson is now the worst manager yeah. ever on 0.42 points per game. Poor lad. Worst than Alan Stubbs. Worst than mm. Alan Stubbs. Uh, it's <laughs> not worse than Kenny Jacket because I don't did Kenny Jacket get any points. Uh, yeah, well. I, I can't remember who did or not, to be honest. He didn't win. I know he didn't win. No. Um, yeah. Don't know. We have a question from Mark Gambles. Uh, he sent us this yesterday. Sent us this yesterday so we'll get, we're going to get through it today, Mark. Um, he asked about the... He's got his conspiracy theory hat on. And we are a big fan of this. We're a big fan of people putting the conspiracy theory hats on uh, for certain things. I shouldn't have said. I shouldn't have said we love it, but he <laughs> mentions. Um, they mentioned a lot of Richardson interviews, Mick, and he talks. Uh, he was all the way there, at Sheffield. Liam Richardson was constantly saying, "While I'm here," that was a constant thing of Liam Richardson. Yeah, uh, he's right. If you think about it, I think every other interview was well, whilst I'm here and that kind of thing. Do you think it, Liam Richardson knew the writing was on the wall? From a long, long time ago, do you think? It, do you think it was a bigger job than? Well, I suppose it is. It was a bigger job than he thought originally, didn't it? So maybe he's, he's not fancied it for a little while. Or, or were he told, "Listen, you, you're going to have it till the last two or three games of the season, then we're bringing in, yeah, big lad from uh, from Stevenage, unless they go up." Yeah, I, I, I mean, you can have that if you want. You can let's run with it. Let's run with it. Come on, yeah. why not? Yeah, that would definitely happen. I, I was there. That was I was the cleaner in that room when that conversation was happening. I rented <laughs> bins, so uh, 
So yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> um, Harry, Harry says, can you check out a points per game of 0.2? However, he didn't have many games, so it doesn't really count. But Richardson, I see what you're saying, Harry, but Kenny Jacket will always be the worst one we've ever had because of the because of uh, the five game spin or whatever it was. Yeah. Uh, I'm afraid. Um, let's keep on to Steve Evans. I spoke to a member of the Stevenage Foot FC podcast earlier because we talked about last night, Mick, about the style of play from Steve Evans. So I thought we'd look at has he changed? Has he evolved over the last 10 years or so? Um, so I've got like a one minute 27 clip from Matt from the Steven FC podcast. So we'll let him have his say and then we can talk about if it's good news, bad news, whatever it might be. It's going up now. Hello, mate. It's Matt here from the Stevenage Football Club podcast. Um, just answering your question, guys, on uh, what to expect from the style from Steve Evans. Um, it's uh, a kind of a kind of see it how you see it type of style. Um under Steve, he built this identity of being a direct side that got the ball forward quickly. Uh, and once we got the ball forward quickly, we were able to play with quality players in the final third. And that's where we set up a lot of our um, goals and, and won a lot of our matches. Um, we were also very strong from set pieces. Steve made sure that we had brilliant options in the box from corners and throws and free kicks. And we were, we were known to score a lot of goals from set pieces. So, look, it is a direct style. You're not going to see a lot of football, although there were games where we played decent football. But for the large majority, you'll see the ball forward early in the air. It'll be direct. It'll be up there. You'll have your teams pressing high. Uh, Steve, well, one thing that Steve liked was whenever we didn't have the ball we were always pressing. We were a very fit group. We went until the very last kick of the game and we were also known for scoring a lot of last-minute goals as well under Steve. So that's the style in a nutshell. As I said earlier, it is it is a style. Literally, what you what you see is what you get. Um, and it's a very effective style. And in League One, it'll, it'll kind of pose a, a really struggling identity for teams to tackle next season, that's for sure. Thanks, Matt, from the podcast. I've seen the FC podcast. I'll be honest with you, Mick. That's everything we've been asking for. High press, aggressive, balls into the box, strong from set pieces. Uh, style of play is ticking everything we've been apps crying out for all season. Yeah, well, see if they can achieve it. I mean, it's it's the style that Paul Warren played as well. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it's not, he's not, he's not it's unique not, to him, is it? Yeah, uh, it's not, not, not unique to him. Well, listen... I, I would love to be sitting here in 12 months' time with people in the comments laughing their heads off about how stupid my 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 comments have been. I, I would love nothing more than that. And I hope I hope it's I hope it's a success. And it will be over the next few weeks, like I said. So um it is what we're asking for. It is what we've been asking for for a long time. Uh, me especially on this podcast mm. over over the years, you know. Um so yeah, maybe he'll prove me wrong. And if he is, if he does, I'll listen. I'll I'll be the first person to stick my hand up and say, "Yeah, I got it wrong." Um, I, I still don't think I have, though. Okay. Well, you got you got it wrong the first time that Evans came in. Yeah, but it eventually, it eventually. Well, everything went, eventually. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. But but times are very different now, and we can't art back to ten years ago when when. And, and it, I know it's a little bit cliche when we talk about him, but the number of players he signed, the turnover of players, that's not going to happen. You know, he had some absolute quality that he, that he was able to bring in. You know, Tavernier, Arneson, Pringle, all these all these players that, that, that were quality. But he can't do that anymore. It, it can't be done. And, he, and clearly he's not been doing that. So... Mm -hmm. Well, sit back and watch, like you said, like everybody said, it's going to be a roller coaster, it's going to be entertaining, and I'm sure there's going to be some fun along the way. Oh, yeah. The issue, the issue for me, and, and we talked about it a long time, a, a lot on, on the podcast last night, um, is longer term, it's not a fix, it's a short term fix. It is, yeah, um, yeah. Again, oh, to sum up the, the differences in the Rotherham fan, <laughs> Mike the Miller says, well done, to, if, if Mick turns a Mick question earlier, so retro, a retrograde a step, we're back in the dark ages. Whereas another comment here says, Adam says, I can't grasp the neg negatives about Steve Evans' returns. I'm so happy about the appointment, already looking forward to August. Those two, <laughs> those two comments, and obviously neither of you are wrong, because it's your opinion, that's how you see it. 
<laughs> uh, but it just shows the difference in opinion of the fans at the minute. And this was the worry for me in November. I mean, mm. now it doesn't matter, does it? Because the season's already dead and the damage was already done in terms of the season. Um, but geez, so, there is so much divide in the fans at the minute. Yeah. Um, yes. Good credit. And, 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 and Kiwi's just hit the nail on the head. Who is the long term fix? No, I, I mean, I wish I had an answer to that. <laughs> it wasn't. It was. It wasn't Warren though. When he came in, it wasn't Warren. Warren wasn't the long term fix. Who, no, who would have thought? Sure. Who would have thought he'd been the best manager in the last ten years? You know, yeah. Not, yeah. 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 It's it's one of the you know a lot of people I, I saw I say a lot of people someone mentioned about Brentford's first team coach or something to that extent yeah just the Cochran yeah yeah or Kieran McKenna or someone like that don't go for them because you know I I I think the risk where we currently are is way too high for what it is but those are the you know yeah those are the sort of long term things that a lot of clubs look at now because they've come through the ranks of academies they know the style of football that the prem championship are looking for and they go from there i don't know it, that's just one of the many things <laughs> that you could that you could look at realistically when you say long term fix i think ultimately the the discussions on whether it's a good thing or a bad thing are, are need to need to disappear pretty quickly now you know we've all had our say over it and you know we've all given our opinion and some people have fallen out. Some people have, have you know, had reason, but reasoned discussions about it. And I'd like to think we've probably had reasoned discussions on here. Mm. Uh, but ultimately, the bottom line is, we our job is to get behind the team. We've said that many, many times. Um, and if if this is what it takes, then this is what it takes. But um, unfortunately, it's not going to do us any good whatsoever this season. Yeah, Robbie says about long term fixes. Uh, we're not necessarily saying if you bring in a manager, that's the long-term fix. The long-term fix is about the background of the football club, mm. and that's what Tom. That that brings up. That's Tom's point from earlier that the, what the the this forward step that we thought we had made as a football club in terms of director of football and restructuring of the football side, that felt like a step forward because that's how modern day football clubs are run. If we mm. if we're going backwards, the problem the problem is the backwards step isn't necessarily Steve Evans. The problem with the backward steps is you ripped up anything that was a step forward. So that, by definition, definition is a step backwards in terms of the football setup at the football club. Now, we don't know whether Rob Scott would have been a good director of football. We, we don't know. We haven't had a chance to see that. So it may not have worked in the first place. But we've yeah. taken that backward step from where mm. from the forward step in November, if that kind of makes sense. I think it makes sense, but it's been a long time. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's completely what I was trying to get at. Is you know this this modern way of football is you know you've got some you've got chairman at the top who just sign you know signs off on we want this much money yeah sound you can have that much and that's it that's all that they really get involved with they they attend the board meetings they do this director of football is the guy that everything goes through looks after the recruitment head coach academy everything that's what the but now who do we we have. Rob Scott looking after recruitment, fine. We have Evans looking after the team, fine. We have no one looking after the. There's no academy. There's no infrastructure. There's nothing to look at the stadiums. Looking nothing to look at how we can improve as a club in itself. You know all these things that came in this season. The um, the the anthem before the game. I know that crashed and burned like a you know an awful you know crash, but you know the the the, the stuff you know the the self serving booze the. Um, the the food improved, I believe, a little bit. Maybe not as much as we'd hoped. There was food vendors, stores outside. That that all came since Rob Scott got director of football role. Whether or not he had anything to do with it might just have been a coincidence. But that all be, all came because of director of football stuff. As soon as you as soon as you upgrade that stuff, and as soon as you upgrade performances on the pitch, you're going to be selling out season tickets like it's nobody's business. If you enjoyed going to the football because of the football, that's one thing. If you if you if the football was okay, but the experience was great, you got to be with your mates and all this, you'd still go and you still pay money. That's where the revenue comes from. And then you slowly build up, which is what I think we should have been doing. I think we should have had a director of football in charge to make these sort of decisions. Evans as manager, fine. Do, yeah, yeah, whatever it is, I don't, I don't mind. But the issue is, as soon as he leaves, you have to bring in a new manager who has to bring in a new philosophy, a new culture, and everything shifts again, like what happened with Taylor. So th their words, they didn't want that to happen again. So then to them, scrap all that and say, uh, you know, Steve, come in, do what you want. Um, when he leaves, it's a matter of when, not if, we may 
we may be in you know trouble again and we may not it really may be not but it's the worry that we may be that is worrying me and i think you guys as well if that's the kind of vibe that <laughs> yeah i mean what i'm what i'm really looking forward to though is tomorrow when somebody listens to this is somebody taking you out of context tom and saying that you're praising rob scott for the for better burgers and better pies <laughs> uh, i'm really, really looking forward to that <laughs> yeah i can't You're wait like Tom on that podcast he said that rob scott's the reason for new beer machines <laughs> what a clown oh god um, there you go Come on. <laughs> i'm just gonna mute my mute twitter tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we could literally talk all night about this we could yeah. go backwards and forwards um Let's move on a little bit. I am going to upset Mick again because I'll be honest, Mick, I enjoy it. It's fun. I, um, I, know it is. I, I don't, you, you may well have seen this, to be honest with you. And I go back to what I said about two weeks ago when I said that the EFL are going to send us on a bad referee tour where we're going to have all the clowns. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. I've forgotten clowns. Um, all the clowns that are left on the PGMOL. So we've had Jeff Eltringham with the penalty. Lee Doughty, was not, we, we don't like, but didn't have a bad game against Swansea. Um, so we've got Keith Stroud on Saturday. We've only got Gavin Ward left to have, and then we've got, completed almost a full set. Oh, Bobby Madley, sorry. Um, so, yeah, big Keith Stroud. What I do, what I am kind of looking forward to, maybe not looking forward to, Mick, but I would have loved to have seen some Steve Evans' re reaction to some of the refereeing decisions we've had this season. You know what I mean? It would have been, that would have been worth the games itself. You know, if, after on your dimmer got sent off at your uh, first home game against Blackburn, Steve mm -hmm. Evans would have been box office at that point. When he saw that, there's, there's stuff to look forward to um, from a refereeing point of view. Yeah, but we're back in League One where referees are a lot better, yeah. so it won't make any difference, will it? So, um, yeah. Yeah, we've got Keith on Saturday, so that that's something else to um, to look forward to, as well as the uh, the unveiling of uh, of the new manager and and everything else. So um, yeah, I'm not going to hold my breath for um, for a particularly good afternoon, quite frankly. Uh, but yeah, Keith, yeah. welcome yeah. back. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, from our point of view, it'll not be uh, it'll be at least another. Well, 18 months before we see you again, minimum. You never know, might go back to end League One. It's the 500, 500, 500 games, 600 games. Yeah. Start, time, start, 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 it's time to start winding down. Yeah. I could miss League One out while we're in it, if uh, if you don't mind. Um, Chad says one thing for certain Ev Evans will strain every sinew to secure pro promotion next season, if only to prove a point. Well, yeah. Accurate. What, what um, I would say is it'd be interesting to see whether or not Alex Ravel comes after the end of the season mm. uh, at Stevenage. That that would placate me massively um, because I think it would appear from what I've seen, the little I've seen of it, that he certainly has quite a quite an effect mm. on on uh, Evans' behaviour and approach to things. So um, hopefully. Hopefully, we see uh, Alex Ravel joining him, and that that would uh, that would make me very happy. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> we've got a couple more bits to to go uh, to go through, but let's let's go through the videos from today, Tom, that the club have put out. Uh, we've yeah, had, yeah more videos of Steve Evans than we did Liam Richardson almost already, to be honest with you. Yeah, and we know yeah. Steve Evans likes not only likes to be centre of attention, but he, he's not shy of a camera. Um, which I, I don't mind, I like, I like that. We need more interaction from the football club. I think that's something Liam Richardson got wrong. Is there wasn't enough sub stuff from, from him. Um, but there was videos of players that I forgot played for Rotherham United. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grant Hall. Grant Hall is still there, Tom. Yeah. Grant Hall's a, a footballer. Um, <laughs> now, he might not be match fit, but he's training with the first team. And that's yeah. John Hugel's training with the first team. Peter yeah. Kiosa training with the first team. Um, I, thought, I thought I spied a Tyler Blackett in there as well. Or maybe I I'm couldn't sure. see Tyler Blackett. I might be wrong. Uh, um, some gallery pictures that they put in. I wish I could share my screen. I've got it up. But yeah, no, it looks like it. I don't know who it is, actually. It might be might be lying. Who knows? Um, <laughs> yeah. How, how funny would it be on, on, on a Saturday if, it's the, if there's a full bench? 
and Hugel's back, <laughs> Granholm's back. It just it, would it be funny? Would it be funny? No. Yeah, it's not. It's not the Steve Evans effect. It's 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 there. It's players' fault. Play, players yeah. have no backbone. Just you know, new new managers come in. Sure, let me let me have a chance to prove myself, sort of thing. Sure, I understand that. But if you're not making yourself available for a manager, and then as soon as another one, you throw in your toys out the pram and whatever. You know, maybe Richardson lost the dressing room. Who knows? Who knows what's going on there? Yeah, but right. but you can't you can't feign injury, and then as soon as a new manager comes in, pretend like everything's fine. No, weirdly enough, Gaffer, I'm all right. I can play now for the last three games. It's I, th I think I don't maybe it says a little bit about Evans maybe he has a reputation like, like what Ben was saying last night about you know he, he terrified when um when he came in when um, he stamped his authority in immediately but it's such a bad look on those players you know your Grant Hall your Jordan your Jordan Hugo J J Hugo and Kyoso maybe I'd, I'd give a little bit of leeway to because um you know you sort of they 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 expressed you know that it wasn't serious they'll be back in them however many games but you know you grant hall and you i didn't see any sign of sean morrison in there no. or you know it just it's one of those things where it looks bad on it looks bad on the players rather than looks good on the manager i don't think evans had much to <laughs> much to do with it other than having a bit of a reputation for you know getting after it i guess um yeah who i uh, yeah i wasn't very happy when i saw that to be honest yeah uh, Farmer said the fear of Evans has cured them. <laughs> yeah, um, idea. Grant Hall going, no, Gaffer, I've got a bit of a strain. <laughs> You're training, mate. Get out of there. Get yeah, out of there yeah. At least put cameras. Yeah. Um, yeah. A few people mentioned Tihi about uh, being in France. I, read about, about, about. I don't think that's unusual for a player to have long term injury and go back to the country that if they're from, not from the country or if they live down south or whatever, or whatever. I don't think that's an issue, um, really. Um, if you, if Tihi's injured, it's better to be with his family and friends than on a flight and on his own in Rotherham. If that kind mm -hmm. of makes sense, so that's we have no inside knowledge on that. But my guess would be there's no ulterior issue with Tihi there. Time will tell, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd be amazed if there's any other issues. Um, bear in mind, we, we signed him for a reasonable amount of money at the time. Um, what do you want? So this is this is the this is the important thing, mate. The football game, and to be fair, this is a massive game for Birmingham. Hmm. So from a Rotherham United point of view, we've got essentially the club have got a responsibility, the players have got a responsibility to put in a performance. Yeah, because this is a massive game in the relegation fight. So let's let's pretend this matters to us. What do you want to see on Saturday? You know, what do you, do you want? To, do you expect we go back four four two, couple of men out wide, this that and the other, or what's What's number one you want to see on Saturday from, from Steve Evans' team? I energy, I press. I'll start with that. Yeah. Um, it's a difficult game. It's a difficult game for us, this. Uh, and I said this I said this on the podcast yesterday. Um, and, and, and don't please don't anybody read the, this wrong. Um, it's not a game necessarily that we want to want to win, <laughs> looking at our long-term future. We don't want Birmingham down with us in that division next year. I said it last night. Um, you know, their, their transfer budget next season is going to be, it's going to blow everybody out of the water. Uh, certainly in League One, possibly, arguably in Championship as well. You know, they've got huge, hugely rich owners who are looking to progress that club in many, many ways on and off the field. We don't want to be fighting them next season. You know, I'd sooner, I'd sooner have stinky neighbours from down road with us. Uh, rather than Birmingham City. So if we win on Saturday, we obviously put them in a very, very difficult position in terms of survival in this division. So on from that side of it, you know, looking longer term, I'm not convinced personally that I, I want to win. But on the flip side of it, obviously, you know, you always want your team to win at home. So, you know, we have to, we have to go for it. And given the bounce that it's going to give, with uh, with Evans being in charge, you know the 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 the, the numbers through the gates will be significantly higher. The noise will be, the atmosphere will be much better than it than it has been probably arguably all season, which is not going to be difficult to be fair. You know, yeah. put three or four more people in there chatting between each other, and atmosphere will go a lot better. So, um, and, and Birmingham, Birmingham have sold their end out. Birmingham are fantastic away travellers. You know, they always always 
create a fantastic atmosphere as well. So it's going to be a noisy afternoon um, for, for two teams in the bottom three of the division. Uh, one already relegated and the other scrapping to get out. Um, it's going to be an interesting game because I, I have no doubt whatsoever that we will up, our players will up their game and given the um, given the, 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 the circumstances as well as the supporters. So, um, it's going to be quite raucous, and then and then you add into that makes Keith Stroud and his unpredictability. It should be an entertaining afternoon, one way or another. Mm. It will, it will. Um, let's talk about what you want to say. again. What you want to see, Tom? I, I've thought about this, and I think job number one is to get Adolfi back in that midfield, one way or another. Um, if that means putting Revan and Humphreys in your back as a back in your back as two centre halves in the back four, or or whatever you want to do, we need to get that presence in that midfield again. Um, mm. And I, I just hope that Sears knows his midfield because he's played at centre-half for so long that mm. I, I often worry that mine just come in and just think, oh, he's a centre-half. I'm really yeah. desperate to see Hack back in that central role again because he just gives us so much impetus when he plays in that midfield. And for me, he's a, he's a Steve Evans kind of player. He's mm. big, he's physical, he's quick, he's good on ball, he can shoot. He, he fits that Steve Evans mould, which could be key for next season. Yeah, definitely. Um, we said we. The thing is, we said it since Humphreys came back from injury that we wanted that yeah. Humphrey, um, a Dolphin back in midfield because <clears throat> why wouldn't like why wouldn't you? He's 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 played fantastically well out of position at centre back, but he's not a centre back. He's a centre, he's a midfielder, and he, he offered more goal threat than anyone in the team did yeah. when he played in that midfield position. So why you know it's just, it's clearly his best position. He's done fantastically well at centre half. He, he has the qualities of a centre half, but he's he's not. He's he's a centre mid, um, up and down. Yeah, I, I I think I think that's where you need to really um, play him in all in all honesty. Um, you know, who knows? We might see a we might see a start. You know, Grant Hall from the start. Who knows? <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Stranger things may have happened. Um, yeah, no, it won't happen. It won't happen. But. As in, Adolphin won't play in midfield, but it's yeah, we missed a bit of grit, <clears throat> you know, steely determination there. Rathbone's been a you know f shadow of himself. Hopefully, mm. Evans finds that bite in him again. Um, we'll see. It should be a spirited performance, no matter what. Mm. Um, players or manager, so fans will be up for it, manager will be up for it. If the players aren't, then we know where the issue lies, really, don't we? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we do. And that's, there's another somebody else out of Rathbone, Mick. Steve Evans kind of plays. He's, he's got he's got a lot of the Frecklingtons about him. He's, he's not as good on the ball as Freck. Nowhere near as good on the ball as Freck. Mm. But he's got a lot of the Frecklingtons about him. So again, he's somebody else I could see working really well in League One. Him and Hacks, you've got... <laughs> that's not a bad midfield uh, two to start, is it, for next season? No, it's not. not it's absolutely not. And if you can keep Ty, uh, mm. and, and if, you, if, if, and I doubt this now, that you could keep Sam Clooks as well, yeah. It's a bit. It's a start to look at a, a quite a solid League One midfield. Well, a very solid midfield yeah. for League One, based on what I remember of it. I mean, you know, but that's two years ago now, so things have moved on. So yeah, um, it's going to be a. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It is going to be interesting. There's no doubt about it. You know, yeah. things that things that, that we were already what whatever happened prior to to yesterday's developments, it was already going to be a busy summer. Um, it could well be an even busier one now. Yeah, yeah, we were settling down. I think I said I said when it broke, because we were just settling down for a really quiet end to the season for podcast. Mm. We were yeah. going to do a couple of shows here and there, finish off, and we'll sail off into the summer quietly. <laughs> no, not anymore. There'll be yeah. fireworks in the next few games. Um, you, need like, you need likes and subscribers. That's why. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good. For the stats, it's great, Steve Evans. For our stats, podcast, it's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Josh Castle says, "Will we keep Rinna Motor?" Well, there's um, another one. I, I think they're all left side to stay. Now we've got Steve Evans, and that's not a dig at Steve Evans. I just think they came in the same with Klukas. They came, Klukas didn't come in for Liam Richardson, but we know the relationship. For me, they're less likely to stay. Hmm. Although I think Rinna was was very likely to stay anyway, weren't they? Yeah, um, yeah. Man, it's very solid midfield in League One. Not sure under Evans the midfield will get to see much of ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say you might have believed Frecklington. He was a Steve Evans sign. It was incredible under Steve Evans. Arnie. Yeah, was. Gary Arnest in the midfield when he played in midfield. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Steve Evans gets a lot of stick for his style. 
And that's the one way I will defend him. I, we were not always a hoofball team under Steve Evans. That was we were massively misjudged on that. We were we went back to front quite quickly, but it wasn't constantly hit the big man, was it? Yeah, we, we quite often went through the middle. We went out of the wide areas. Um, yeah, I think we were harshly judged under Paul Warren and then under Steve Evans as well. Um, let's go off topic slightly a little bit. Phil says, what do we think about the FA Cup replays, guys? Um, big news in the world of FA Cup. The FA Cup, FA have took it upon themselves without consultation of the EFL and the National League or below the National League that FA Cup replays are not necessary anymore. Uh, and the Premier League, out of the goodness of their hearts, obviously, have, have given £33 million to grassroots football which is quite a vague um, description. Um, Mick, mm -hmm. what's on the story? Well, I think this this is Mr Masters and his uh, Premier League chums doing as much damage as they possibly can before this, uh, this uh, independent regulator comes in. Um, because I think they are going to be running scared in the Premier League if... If that is passed, um, so you know he's, they're, they're just going to try and screw as much money out of it as they possibly can, and or as, or as much benefit as they can uh, before that comes into play. Um, so it's 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 embarrassing. It's a disgrace, and I, 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 it just it just sums up the way football is in this country at the moment. Um, the sooner. This European Super League comes into play, the better as far as English football is concerned for me. Get rid of these scumbags at the top of the Premier League who, who are just ripping the heart out of football. Send them off into Europe and let's have our game back. Let's have go back to our four divisions and and teams with you know local teams with with, with local supporters. If you like, I sound a bit like I'm on. <laughs> You know what I mean. You know, you know precisely where I'm coming from with that. You know, it, it's just, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassingly transparent that this is just purely about a money grab from the major Premier League teams. And I, I, I it's yeah, get rid, get rid as quick as possible, as far as I'm concerned. But you know, Masters is already lobbying Parliament for to to. To prevent, or in an attempt to try and prevent the uh, the independent regulator, despite telling the, the government commission that he would not be doing that, he's now doing it. Um, so you know, it's just just embarrassing. Get rid of him. Just yeah. get rid. We don't need him. We don't want him. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I, I don't speak for everybody. I speak for myself. I don't want him. <laughs> No, I'd be happy to see back up to honest with you. I think there is a conversation to be had about FA Cup replays because I think the calendar you you've got to figure factor in the UEFA Champions League, the Europa League, and Conference League. There are there are four extra games or two extra games oh, in those competitions. Dear. So the FA Cup re replay windows have closed basically. So I, there is a conversation to be had about this. So I mean, yeah, also, and also the with the squads of forty players plus. And all and all the other all the other talent that the that the stockpiling and won't let anybody else have, you know, yeah. how how will they cope? Well, what I also what I also was going to say is, Sheffield Wednesday and Coventry and FA Cup replay in the fourth round that wasn't good for anybody either. So I think there's a conversation about FA Cup replays in football nowadays. The problem is is the way they've gone about it. The way they've gone about it is completely out of order. Like you said, Mick, they've gone behind the EFL's back which is mm -hmm. the biggest organisation in the country, football organisation in the country with 72 teams, um, professional professional structure. Um, and they've said, you know, we know we know what's better for you. Don't worry about it, guys. We're going we're gonna to decide for you what is what is the absolute best. And it's it's a power play. And you're right, Mick, it's to get things can through, the things through that they can before the regulator comes in. Um, it needs to be stopped as now they need to reverse their decision what they've decided and the only way to do this one of the few ways to do this is for EFL teams to come out strongly with statements like Tranmere did today yes with as strongly worded statement as possible and if it means threatening to withdraw from the FA Cup because you don't agree with the rules threaten to withdraw from the FA Cup from next season 
Mm. Because that is the only way. You look, look what happened in the Super League when fans when fans showed how much how much how important these things are, they capped themselves and mm. backed off. EFL clubs need to grow up. Grow up's wrong, Shana. That's wrong. That they need to grow a pair <laughs> and stand up. They need to stand up to Premier League because it's completely wrong the way they've gone about it. The Premier League, it's it's murky as hell. Um, mm. Tom, anything? All of the above, yeah, it's it's ludicrous. I saw a comment about um, Thomas Frank was a big oh let's let's scrap it yeah. and Brentford um, it, uh, ten years ago or something were in seven million pound debt and they had a um, they had a tie against Premier League Southampton and they they managed to get a draw so they had a reverse fixture and that reversed and they made something like five hundred thousand from that and that was it uh, you know mm. it helped them out a lot. And then he's there saying, yeah, let's get rid of it and all this. And it's just, you know, let's not forget, you know, those kind of roots that you come from and <clears throat> how, how much it does for lower league clubs, you know, in t- you know, football aside, in terms of business and money, Jesus Christ, it does a hell of a lot for, you know, lower league sides and non-league sides. It's it's brilliant. We we would never have got, um, is it Ipswich made so? Or was that yeah, already? Yeah, yeah, Ipswich made so. That does, yeah, yeah, this year, yeah. Um, is that a replay? I can't remember. Uh, um, it wasn't a replay, no, it was, but, they, but they won, they won this. Yeah, they won the anyway, what, yeah, what I'm trying to get at is that the money that's involved in a in a big, big, big draw, and then if you get a you know um, a replay, the, the money that comes with it for a low league side is brilliant. You know, football time aside, that can be spoken about different times. You know, you know, smaller clubs love would would, would relish that payday. Um, so I, I'm with you know I'm with you. It's if if you're that strongly about it and you don't agree with it, threaten to, threaten to remove yourself from the competition and then laugh at him. See what happens then. Let it yeah. just let it just all be about the Premier League because that's all it ever is about, isn't it? Of course it is, mate. Mm. Um, Matt Miller says, "What conversation?" They say he mentions the beauty of the tradition. We're throwing we're throwing all that to be subservient league boys. Yeah, that's fine. I, I I'm I'm a fan of FA Cup replays, but I'm also a fan of you do have to move with with the times in football. There are changes that are happening for which, which we as fans and which the EFL and, and even the Premier League are out of control. We can't control the Club World Cup that's coming in a couple of years' time as well. But if you said if you brought in a rule that said before the game, let's say Burton Man U, because that did happen 10, 15 years ago, Burton Man U drew each other in the FA Cup and they decided between them that we don't want a replay, but Manchester United are going to hugely compensate Burnley, uh, Burton, sorry, then they don't have a replay. But then there's then there's the a proper compensation package in place for Burton for Exeter like Exeter got a replay against Man U 15 years ago, which, which would have helped would have helped them and Colchester winning getting loads of money from Chelsea in a, in a in a cup competition as well. I'm not saying we should scrap the referee cup replays because I like them, but there is also a conversation about modern football and if there is space in the calendar and if there is a way to make it work for League Two, for non-league and the Premier League, which. I, there obviously is, but they're not going. To, I don't think that's going to happen. I should say. Yeah. Well, and, and you've got Thomas Frank there doing what Bournemouth did and, and trying to pull the ladder up behind them, aren't they? In, yeah. in that Premier League. Yeah. Uh, and, and for what for, for what it's worth, um, what John's mentioned in the comments there about Thomas Frank, I've said many, many times, and do agree <laughs> with it. There's no need to there's no need to publish it, but yes, I have said that a few times, John, and uh, thoroughly agree with that. Um, yes. But but yeah, look, get rid of them. Get rid of Premier League. It's a waste of space as far as um, as, as far as actual football in this country is concerned, and all it does is suck money from everybody else. And then they can't get far in Champions League this season, you know, with all that money. They can't, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah, um, yeah. And we've got we've got the Papa Johns of the uh, European leagues tonight, haven't we? Uh, still on, you know, and, and we're still banging on about that. Yeah, nah, not for me. Get rid of them, bin them off. We don't need them, don't want them, not welcome. Yeah, obviously, all that is irrelevant to Rotherham United because we never make it past <laughs> third round, so it's all basically irrelevant anyway. Um, yeah. but yeah, um, yeah, sack the Premier yeah. League off, get rid of them. Um, <laughs> who needs them? Uh, anything else you want to mention before we go to predictions? Uh, yeah, just one thing. Uh, John obviously is a banking on them getting into Premier League, so he wants it reformed and they're not getting rid of. Just to, uh... <laughs> yeah. you'll be pulling the ladder up behind you, John, when you get up there. You know it. 
<laughs> yeah, you will. Um, have you seen, by the way, this is not relevant, but you've seen how you mentioned Richard Masters was lobbying in Parliament. Mm. Do you, know, do you know which organisation was lobbying with them against the regulator? No. The National League. Oh, yeah, but they're, I mean, let's be fair, they, they, are, they are absolutely out of their trees in National League, aren't they? I mean, they, they are just completely bonkers. <laughs> was, was it Dover Athletic they, they, oh, they yeah. spilled over? I can't remember who it was. They, they yeah. kicked them out of the league because they didn't fulfil some fixtures for, for whatever. And it, the didn't, yeah. reason they didn't fulfil it was because of something that the National League had done. I don't know. It was just bizarre. Yeah. Utterly bizarre. Yeah. So, so yeah, they're as they're as as crazy as 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 Premier League, mm. but just for different reasons. Yeah, they are. Yeah, um, Tom, are you looking forward to Saturday? Are you looking forward to the game more than you would have been prior? Yeah, to more, more, more so. I'm 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 interested to see what's going to happen. I I wouldn't say excited. I'd say interested. I'm mm. you know I'm interested to see what happens and. What what goes up? Well, yeah, the performance we put out, I you ex, you you expect it and want it to be a bit better, a bit more fired up, a bit more passion. But <clears throat> sometimes with these players, you just sort of think, have they got it in them? You know, I was I was on the I was on the Birmingham podcast earlier today, and he was saying um, that the players that they have, you know, these some of them don't even, you know, the. The players that I was expecting to say weren't even the players that he was mentioning, you know, the Sariki Dembele's and the Jordan mm -hmm. James's and the um, all that. I think they're in a good run of, you know, they've just beaten uh, Coventry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's um, it'll be it'll, it's a it's, you know it's a tough ask most times we play in the championship because the golfing quality is is huge. But you know, you, you'd like to think that we at least. I'd, I'd, I'm interested in the performance more than the result now. Yeah. Uh, Phil says more interesting in the response. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I've seen a lot of people buzzing, Mick. To be fair, I mean, I, I'm not in the category of buzzing. I'm, I'm looking forward to the game more than I was if Liam Richard was in charge. Um, but it's still, still a dead rubber, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent it is, and, and they have been since. Well, I don't know when. Um, so yeah, it is, as far as we're concerned. But there, there, there are other parts. It makes it more interesting now. Mm. It makes it more interesting to see where. Um, whether we're going to get a reaction from this set of players, even if we do, it's not really relevant, is it? You know, it, it, because the the bulk of them are not going to be with us next season anyway. So it's all really a bit of a moot point whether or not we perform or not. Yeah. Um, I just expect there will be a, there will be a bounce. It's just a question of how big a bounce. Mm. Yeah. Whether that, whether the size of that bounce really actually matters, given that, well, and I, I, no, listen, I'm not being, I'm given, given where we are in the season, you know, and, and where we are, and and it, it, it doesn't, it genuinely doesn't matter. It's not like it would allow you to carry any momentum into next season, you know, which is six, four months away or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, we'll see. I suppose the question is, are these players good enough? We've been saying all season that these players are good enough. They're just either not willing to or haven't been able to play play as well. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of people have told us that the players aren't good enough. So it, we're, we're going to kind of find out. We're going to find another chance to find out on Saturday if mm -hmm. there's anything about these players. Have they got something about them? Are they, are they, are they decent players that can play in the right circumstances? Mm -hmm. um, we're about to find out. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll go through our predictions in a minute. Steve Bunny says 2 1 to the Millers, as uh, Yoza says 1 0. Uh, John Mann says he doesn't want to win but thinks we will win 2 1. <laughs> uh, Josh Caswell says 1 0 to the Millers, and Steve Evans to get a red card for over celebrating. Uh, Top Cartley says 5 0 to Birmingham, piggies to come down with us. Um, John says, from a, uh, the only Birmingham view we have on the show, uh, <laughs> thinks if they play like they did against Cardiff, we will win 2 1. If they play like they did against Coventry last week, the Coventry will win 4 1. Um, Powermed says nil 1 to the Millers. Uh, no, no one to Birmingham at half time, and then 2 1 Evans comeback is what he does. Uh, Chris says 2 0. Harry says 1 0. Sarah says 1 1. Uh, 3 1 to Birmingham says Mike Connell. Uh, Mike says 2 2. Phil says 1 2. Um, okay, let's see. Mick. What? what are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know. Uh, two one Rotherham. 
<laughs> spent two days kicking off about him and becoming manager. I was just about to say, say listen, I, I, listen, I've not said that he's not going to win some games. We're going to get a bounce. We're bound to get a bounce. The, the atmosphere, there's going to be loads of people there who are, who are really, really happy that he's here and they'll be making bags and bags of noise and, and creating a decent atmosphere. He should lift the team, you know. There's no doubt he'll lift them to a degree. Whether it's enough is another matter. But, yeah, 2-1, Rotherham. Mick, Mike says, Mick, we love your predictability. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, Tom? Um, it's Yeah, I still... Evans has had two days with them. Two days with them might be enough for him, but these players are the same players that lost 5-0, 5-0. Mm. Um, what, 2-0, 1-0, you know, 0-0 nil, nil against Huddersfield. This this is the same, this is the same team. Nothing's changed. Nobody's come in player-wise that's going to change anything. We've still got the same first coach. Evans has been there two days. And yeah, he can motivate them. He can he can get them up for it. I think the performance will be better. I just can't see or I think the golfing quality is too much. I'm going to say two on Birmingham. Yeah, I can see if you remember when Stevens first came in. We went away to Shrewsbury on the first game, and Shrewsbury were going for promotion. I think I think we mm. got automatic promotion, and yeah. we turned up, went one nil up inside ten minutes from a Crestwell goal, and then it all fell to pieces very quickly in that game. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I remember um, that game. Yeah, I, if I had to, I'm, I, my prediction's one one, um, but I wouldn't be surprised to see us go up early and, and then lose. Tom, I'm really sorry. Looking at comments, I didn't write down what your prediction was. What were your prediction? I'm not gonna. You're gonna have to guess it. I can't remember. I will look at it. I will look at the contact. I said, I said two on Birmingham. <laughs> okay, cool. We've got all three, all three results covered here. Yeah, um, there's a guaranteed winner. A guaranteed winner, and splinters for the podcast as well for not not sticking in the hell. <laughs> um, anything else we need to mention? We could again. We could probably go on all night. We could spend another two hours yeah. talking about the couldn't we? To be honest. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's the kind of guy he is. Um, somebody put up about the fist bumps. Harry says, if we win and there's no fist bumps to North Stand, I'll be Steven. <laughs> I know he loves his fist bumps, but can you imagine sitting at the bottom of the league on 44 <laughs> games with 26 points and your manager doing fist bumps? I just can't. It'd be I just can't. Um, I, I find that, I, and then this is not a Steve Evans thing because there's lots of other teams, a lot of other managers do it. I find it. Incredibly cringy. I even really do. I know. Even when Victor does it, and and I'm sorry, Victor. I apologise, but I do. I, I just find it incredibly cringy. Maybe that's me. I, I don't know. I'm not a massive fan, but I'm all for it. If it gets fans happy, I'm all for it. Yeah. Don't I do don't. It this season, not this season. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I think it's a bit. Oh God, but it's just funny. <laughs> Especially when you won, you just you're elated. You don't care. It's just yeah. 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 It'll be all. It'll be all over. It'll be all over social media. These Tim Pot lot down road. They won the fifth yeah, yeah, game yeah. of the season. They gain it bigger. Yeah. Um, John Morrell, Klopp has a lot to answer for when it comes yeah. to doing this. Yes, he does. So they, well, they went from draw or something like that, and it got a bit. You got a bit carried away, didn't it? Uh, yeah, they did the whole yeah lifting their hands up. Yeah. Fingers crossed. He didn't. Uh, he didn't get the opportunity to do it tonight. Uh, well, they're not gonna, anyway. I think, are I they, think they're they're winning. Winning. they are winning one nil. Yeah, just starting, so okay. yeah. did uh, uh, to see Emmy Martinez save two penalties again to send out the semis. Yeah, <laughs> oh, well, I don't mind Emmy Martinez being he, a got sent, he got sent off after the first save and was allowed to continue. How yeah, I, I don't know, I've got no clue. I've just I just saw the headline. Okay, we'll, yeah. to, we'll, we'll do some investigate on that one. Um, Smack on says, Sorry, Mick, but it's an old thing, and you've got to, you've got to laugh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, John, I'm not happy about you being positive about Villa. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, just found it, I just found it interesting. He got sent off and still allowed to play. It's bizarre. <laughs> um, we're gonna end it there. Thank you, everybody who's joined us over the last couple of nights. As we'd expect, the numbers have shot up over the last couple of days. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. This is basically what it's like all the time. Mick complains about summer. I try to make things funny, and Tom talks. That that's the show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tom talks. Right? <laughs> uh, that's the show. So if you like it, make sure you've subscribed on YouTube. Follow us on X as well. 
We were back on Sunday evening, which will be a review of the Birmingham game. Anything that happens, instant reaction. We'll do an instant reaction on Saturday evening as well. Um, as well, so you know, we try to stay relevant doing these kind of things. Um, so we'll be <laughs> <laughs> oh, you clown. <laughs> That's an inside joke, can I'm sorry, everybody. Um, but it was funny. I promise it was funny uh, to make. Um, <laughs> <laughs> watch out for the instant reaction on Saturday night, and then we'll be back to the evening. <laughs> uh, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe on YouTube and iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're watching, listening. Make sure you, uh, you get, get uh, subscribed there and get involved. You know, we're, we're, we're our DMs are always available on Twitter. If you've got a question you want to send into us, that we'll try and get through. Uh, and we'll do what we can when we can. Uh, Mick, thank you for being happier today than you were yesterday. Yeah, I might be even happier tomorrow. We're not doing a podcast tomorrow. Yeah, well, no. that might be why. <laughs> Fair, <laughs> enough. Fair, enough. <laughs> Fair enough. And Tom, it's a pleasure having you with us, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, no worries. Thank you for the therapy session. It's been good. We'll see you all next time. Thank you as always. And as always, up the Millers. Up the Millers. Up the Millers. It's a wild, wild through a goal. Swansea beyond Fodringer. And the Millers are in front in the South Yorkshire Derby. Oh. And for the first time in 42 yes. years, yes. Rotherham United win at Bramall Lane. On the edge of the box, Adolfi. He can hit them. And he does. Oh. No! Adolfi! Oh, what an absolute screamer for Rotherham United. Rotherham United have secured their championship status for next.